So I thought we'd start with the least sexy part of miniature painting, and that is prepping the model. What you might not know is when these are molded, they're in two part molds. And when they separate them, there's usually a mold line along where the two molds met. If you don't catch that in the beginning, it shows up like a sore thumb at the end. Not to mention that there could be mold release agent on it, which is like a grease. There's probably dust and fur from the air, especially if you have pets. If you start crappy, you're gonna finish crappy. So let's take a little time and uh, make sure this model's ready to go. Probably don't throw it on your desk. So to start off, I'm actually going to clean the miniature. I use diluted simple green and I'm just gonna spray them down. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually put this in my sonic cleaner and do it that way. But since I'm assuming a lot of people don't have sonic cleaners out there, um, it made more sense to actually do this the good old fashioned way. So after I spray it down, I'm just gonna dip it in some water, dab off any major pooling, make sure you don't have anything on there. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna take a dried up brush and I'm just going to just lightly brush over the entire model. And you wanna do this with a brush that's not wet or you want it to be dry don't use a good brush for this because we're going over a model like this with a dry brush not ideal um, you're gonna ruin the bristles as you can see here some of the bristles are now starting to sp spread away from the center i'll cut those off uh, so i don't have to waste an entire brush just to clean a miniature at this point what i'm going to do is i'm just going to finish drying it off that way i know there's no moisture left on the miniature and i'm just going to use my hair dryer to get the rest of it and this shouldn't And one good thing about using your hair dryer, especially on plastic miniatures, is where the sword was kind of bent out of shape, I was able to heat that up and bend it back a little bit. It's not gonna be 100%, but it's definitely better than it was. This step you can skip if you'd like. A lot of people do not do this. I'm not sure if there is anyone else I know of that does this, but for me, it helps a lot. And that is doing kind of a utility wash. All I'm gonna do is, quickly brush over this guy, um, let the details kind of come out, but that's also gonna make any mold lines or imperfections show up a lot more. So when I'm doing this type of work, I like to just put down a palette pad and work off that. And that's because I don't like wasting my um, wet palette sheets on this type of stuff. And it, is gonna be more time consuming to go that way anyway. So I'm just gonna use an ink and I'm gonna dilute it down with some water. I'm not gonna make a wash um, just because it's a little overkill. I don't really care about how this looks. I just wanted to make details show a little bit more. So I'm just gonna put a drop of ink right on my palette paper. Uh, use that same brush I was using earlier and we are going to add a ton of water to this ink. And the nice thing about using this palette paper for this is I don't have to worry too much about making a mess. And now we're just going to brush on our really bad makeshift wash. We're not really taking too much care to make it perfect. As you can see, the paint's not sticking very well. well since we're just starting this series, I'm going to start off a little bit better than I did last time. And, and I'm gonna wear some uh, nitro gloves while I'm doing this. 
Um, and not that anything here is particularly toxic, but it's always a good idea. You know, if you can help not getting paint on you, that's always better than getting covered in it. Um, I'm actually going to water this down a little bit more. Just to get it to flow a little better. And again, we don't care if this looks good right now. This is not part of our paint job. This is just to help us see where we might have some issues before we start painting. And as you can see, because it's not primed, this is a good lesson in priming. Um, we'll, we'll get to that point where I go into detail about priming, but for now you can see why it's so important to prime. Because paint does not stick well. And fortunately for us, we actually don't want it to. So now we've got some on there. We're just going to dab off any excess here. And I'm just going to spread out what's still in here wiping off what I don't need. All right. And we're not particularly worried about this drying. We just want to see, if you look there, you can see where our mold lines are. And this guy is particularly bad because it goes up one side of his face and then down the back of his hair and then down this arm here. That's pretty typical uh, when you're dealing with anything from WizKids. Um, Reaper is pretty bad with mold lines as well. Um, I do prefer Reaper because the, um, to be honest, there's not a huge difference in the quality between the two, but the Reaper sculpts tend to be a little bit better. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next part of this. Now, I was hoping that this model was gonna have some major gaps in it so I could show that process as well. Fortunately, I don't really see anything here of note. Once I come across a miniature that does have more of a gap in it, I'll have to make a separate video just on filling gaps and some tricks you can use for that. So when we're removing mold lines, you might see a tool out there that uh, looks like this. Don't bother with this. It does have certain applications it's really good with. Most miniatures, this is garbage, but I'm gonna recommend. So rather than using something like that, instead, I'm gonna use this junk blade on my old hobby knife. Um, I haven't changed this blade in years and it's because it works really well for removing these mold lines. Now, the way you want to do this is I see a lot of people going with the blade in a certain direction. I don't recommend this because it's very easy to score into this plastic, especially if you're using like one of the, the Nolzers, any other WizKid line or Reaper lines, though that plastic cuts very easily. Use blade down onto the surface like this and scrape. And it's just going to make sure, just getting some liquid off there. That's just gonna make sure that you don't gouge anything out. And if you need to, you can use the point and go from side to side. Just be careful doing this because you can create a texture that you really don't want in there. And speaking of texture, this next section does have a little texture. And what I like to do here, is I'll use that tip and I'll just go back and forth along that texture, trying to match it the best I can. Um, really, all you wanna do is remove 
the perfectly straight line that's there because that's going to stick out. Um, you can just take the top of it off and that'll usually be good enough. Um, sometimes you have to do a little bit more in the details or you can get to that point, go over it lightly and call it a day because it's, it's a lot of work um, to try and go in and re-sculpt some of those details, especially if you're not used to sculpting. If you go too much in there, you could end up creating, uh, you, you could create a, a mess for yourself. Because you'll see once I'm done with this, I'm gonna move on to filing and sanding. And you don't really wanna file and sand those textures. I'm being very gentle on the face here. I'm not going too extreme with how much I take off the face um, because it's gonna be a little easier to sand that. Uh, when you get into the hairline, try and go in the direction of the hair get the bulk off and then use that point and just scrape down into the hair the nice thing about the hair is that texture if you create perfect lines in the the hair texture um it'll find it'll be fine you'll it'll just blend into the rest of the hair um so we're just going to clean this up and for this area here there's actually these little details and the um, of course, I can't think of what this is called right now, but it's, it's like a scarf that goes around, uh, the top part of his armor here. And there are ripples in the fabric and that mold line runs down those ripples. So what I like to do is just kind of reshape it into that ripple, getting rid of that mold line. And usually you can hide it pretty well in there. Um, just again, try not to go too hard on there because you are going to, uh, mar it up pretty bad. Okay. And you can see here where some of that ink is. Um, that's just where one plane meets another. So we're not going to worry about anything in there. So the one other area I'm seeing is right here up into here and there's some texture here as well and again i'm just using the point i'm just trying to get rid of the top part of the line i'm not gonna try to go in there and get rid of the whole line um, all right i'll come back to where i started work on this hand the reason why i go to this point last um, is because this is going to be the most difficult because it's going to show up more than any other part uh, because it's the weapons, the hands, and the face are always going to be where your eyes go first. So if you mar this up, if you scratch this up too much and um, you, or you miss a chunk of the mold line, it's going to kind of show up more here than anywhere else. So we're just going to give it a little extra attention. Uh, go down your sword blade. And you're gonna notice on some of these edges, like here, as I'm scraping this mold line, where this plane meets this plane, we have a little bit of a plastic that's kind of curling up from where we're scratching it off. That's gonna be actually much easier to remove once we start using the files. So don't try to get that all because you'll end up just chopping off a chunk of that. I'm going to clean up that sword, okay, and right here, there's another mold line. Uh, we're not really seeing it go up the leg too much, but here on this boot, it's actually quite bad. So I have these layers, so it goes here, and steps down here, and then steps down and then steps down again here towards the toe of the boot. And because of the way this these planes flow, you're better off coming down like this and then cleaning up inside where those where one 
part meets the other and you get almost a 90 degree. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my blade and I'm just scraping down and I'm pass, I'm skipping over this part when I make that first pass down. And then afterwards I can come in to this and then scrape that part out doing the same thing and then go down from there. It just gives it a, a cleaner look. When you're done and then if you want to just scrape from side to side on the boot, get as much of that off as you can. You have to wonder if the people who make the molds get really lazy with them because some of these seem like they could have put it in a much better place that would uh, be easier to hide, but instead they put it right on key details like the face or the hand. You know, it, it would be fine, I think, if it was on uh, front and back plane versus top and bottom plane, because the top plane, every angle you look at this, it's going to be visible. So yeah, just a thought. Of course, if one of you are one of the people that makes the molds, I'm very sorry at calling you lazy. Um, please forgive me, but maybe you can leave a comment in the messages as to why you do that. That'd be helpful. So I'm pretty happy with the mold lines right now. There are still mold lines on here. Um, there are other blemishes and imperfections, but there's actually a way that I'll show you later on you can remove those that is not nearly as time consuming and kind of risky because when we're scraping these mold lines you know you can always repaint something but it's much more difficult to re-add plastic that you've scraped off again i'm not really seeing much for gaps on here nothing that would be worth showing you how to fill them anyway we're gonna go ahead and file down a lot of the places that we just scraped because we want the end product to be as smooth as we can get it. So we're just gonna lightly with a file and this is a, a 160 grit file. So it, it is pretty aggressive, especially on plastic, but we're just gonna come across this very lightly. Don't hit any of the areas where you have uh, texture showing. Um, or I should say intentional texture showing because this is going to remove that texture. And you probably don't want that because it's gonna make it look odd. And on the face, I'm just gonna go ahead and with the tip of the file, just very lightly, I'm going to Reduce that line. Same thing with the hair. And these areas of the fabric that I was reshaping, I'm just going to smooth that out as much as I can. I'm not sure how much of this you can actually see on camera. Um, what does help is doing that initial ink wash for lack of a better term, really helps locate a lot of where these issues are on the miniature. You know, can, when you have a, a single colored object that has no real contrast, it can be really hard to figure out exactly where these are. And I can hear this one moving through this fabric. And you can probably see where the lighter plastic is, where I'm kind of just smoothing away that line. And when we have this plastic build up, we're just going to very lightly graze over it. Okay, that part looks good. Now 
Now, usually when I paint a miniature and it comes on the pudding bases, uh, that's what this poorly textured and designed base that the miniature is standing on. It's called the pudding base. They're awful. Um, I don't care who the manufacturer is, they never look that good. Um, I usually like to make my own bases, so I cut the miniature right off this base. I probably will not go over that in this beginner series, just because really for a beginner, it doesn't make sense to go to that length. Um, you know, get comfortable with this before you start modifying this. Now I'm just gonna sand down those same spots and this, I don't remember what grit this sandpaper is, but it's very fine. And you can buy these sticks on Amazon. I forget the manufacturer, but they're relatively inexpensive. So, um, and they're great. So we're just gonna very lightly go over all of the areas that first we scraped the mold lines and then we used the file. Um, so, get in here. Uh, a lot of people use emery boards for this too. They'll cut them up, um, which does work quite well. I just found these sticks and found them very useful because they're easy enough to get in tight spaces. And if I need to, I can always cut this at different angles. Of course, you can do the same thing with an emery board as well. So I'm gonna call this done as far as um, my initial removal of the mold lines and any other little blemishes that I found on it. So what I'm actually going to do is now that I've finished that first pass, I'm going to go ahead and give it another quick, um, I guess I'd call this a utility wash. And it's again, it's just to find where all my issues are with this. You'll notice because I've already applied this once, it's going on a little bit easier. Um, and that's just because of the ink now has something to bond to there. And I'm not, again, I'm not worried about this looking good. You'll hear a lot of uh, miniature painters say that you have to make it look good. Sorry. You'll have to make it look bad before it looks good. And there couldn't be anything closer to the truth. The really, really lame uh, accidental reversal of a saying I just did there, but I said what I meant. I'm just gonna wipe that down and check over those main areas. So if we look, the mold lines have been reduced quite a bit, but they're not completely gone. I'm just gonna give it a quick pass with the knife again. And then once, once we've done that, um, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and spray them down one more time. And the reason why I'm spraying it down this time is because I don't want any of this wash that I did to uh, affect any of the details, especially before I prime it. Um, you know, it could create 
uh, unwanted textures and stuff like that that I really don't want in there. So I'm just going to uh, get rid of most of it. You know, if it's in a spot where no one can see, don't worry too much about it. We'll go ahead and dunk them again. Dry them off. Now that's done, I'm going to clean him off one more time using the brush method again. And I like using a brush to clean miniatures because it gets into spots that I couldn't to I couldn't get into with like the rack. So there's one last step I do want to share with you in this process. Um, very simple step. So we had all the areas where we went over, and there's probably going to be some issues in those areas. Um, that's just the nature of the game. So what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this miniature off again. And we're just going to wick up any additional moisture that might be with the brush. Then, I'll come back over to our palette pad, and we are going to use some matte varnish. So, we're not going to put this on the sword. We're just going to bead this up all along that mold line. And because this is self-leveling, it's going to get rid of most of what's left over on this. And if you have really bad mold lines and you don't want to mess up the miniature too much, you can always do this a couple times. But I always like to do it at least once when I'm prepping a miniature. And don't really worry too much about it running off and stuff like that. Just put it on there, let it dry, and you can see where I've placed it all along there. Another thing we can do at this point is look for any small potential gaps we might have. Um, again, I don't really see any on this miniature, um, so it's not really worth doing on this one. But if you notice anything on yours, go ahead and try to fill some of that with some varnish because it will self level and as it dries and it self levels it'll create uh, a tr more of a transition from the line to the flatter parts of the miniature that's it now we're just going to let this dry once it's dry we can go ahead and prime it so don't expect this to be perfect when you're done. You probably have missed mold lines or blemishes. Could be a hair that you find later on. We want to make sure that we catch any of the big stuff. That way we're starting with the opportunity to paint our best. There are some tricks on how to clean up anything that comes out in paint. You missed a mold line and you've already got a couple coats of paint on there. There are ways we can take care of that. Same thing with gaps. Don't worry, it's not the end of the world. Why don't you go ahead, finish up, and I'll see you in the next video.